Good morning, good evening, and good day to you, the viewer of this video presentation. With the arrival of Dark Souls II on your home console units, a major part of the experience is assisting a chap in need by playing cooperatively. An issue then arises. How should one behave if one doesn't want to upset the poor fellow whose world is so graciously playing host to me? What etiquette should I adopt in order to ensure that I be invited back for another visit? How do I engage in cooperative play like a gentleman? Well, fret not, for we here at the PSC have put ourselves through a myriad of awkward social interactions in order to be able to advise you via these three simple steps. Step 1. Always engage in a proper greeting. There is not one thing in this world more abrasive than a combat partner that lacks the common decency to provide you with a proper hello. Upon being summoned in, or inviting a squire into your abode, make haste to immediately locate the new blood and make them feel right at home. Bowing is perhaps the most formal of hellos, but don't feel as though you're being too forward by giving them a friendly wave. You may also wish to adopt the customs of summonees by greeting them in a manner they may be more accustomed to, such as praising the sun, if those of the distant and untamed Orange Clan decide to pay you a visit. If a player begins their welcoming gesture and you've already moved past them, it's considered to be in incredibly bad form to continue unabated, so do make sure you position yourself back in front of them until their hello has ceased. Equally, you may find yourself in a situation where one of two people engaged in the greeting ritual has finished their welcome before the other. In this circumstance, you should never leave the side of your partner until they're finished, but it is, however, completely acceptable to run in small circles or continuously utilize your shield in a bizarre dance-esque movement until they're ready to proceed. Step 2. Pass your knowledge on. This is a vital step on the long road to being truly appreciated and not thought of as a useless get-about. If you are particularly familiar with an area that your host is experiencing for the first time, waving, pointing, and standing motionless until a player comes to check if everything's tickety-boo are all equally effective strategies to bring attention to something that one might find useful, such as a bonfire, a chest, or an NPC. If correctly versed in what good manners consist of, the host player will thank you, either by gesturing or, in some rare occasions, they may be so grateful that they'll gift you an item. If, however, they seem to show no appreciation, don't take it overly personally. Not all individuals are fortunate enough to come from middle-class families, and it's probably safe to assume that they're the product of a working-class, broken home. It really is incredibly saddening. Step 3. Thank your partners properly. The principal purpose of calling for aid is, of course, defeating the local area boss. Upon the approach to the blighter, gesture appropriately. The decapitate, point, and warm-up animations are all bound to strike fear into the heart of any enemy, and we're sure that if it could see you through the fog, it'd be pretty bloody scared. In the aftermath of the grueling battle, there's only a small window of time to thank your comrades. Having successfully cooperated on many an occasion, we can advise you that there's enough time to gesture twice. Firstly, crack off a celebratory jump for joy or fist pump, but immediately afterwards you should always make room for a bow. A friendly wave simply won't cut it here. Your new friends have risked everything to get you to where you are, so the least you can do is move one leg back and bend forward at the waist. And there we have it. Follow these simple golden rules and you and your associates will soon become fast friends. And remember, other people's opinions of you mean everything. So try not to be a prat.